God says yes sometimes, God says no sometimes, God says I'm thinking about it. Where do you get all of that from? Religion. As long as you ask in mm. my name mm. and as long as you have delighted yourself in him and those desires are according to what he has planted in your heart, mm. guaranteed he will give it to you. Glory be to God. In these last days of gross darkness, God wants us to get up, to change position, to change our way of thinking, to change our attitude, to understand what he wants us to understand. He's always manifested his word. His word became flesh. A man seated in heaven representing you. That's his word becoming flesh. That's how far he went for you to see the word that was with him before the beginning. And even before the word became flesh, he spoke through prophets. He spoke through men of old. But it was hazy. It wasn't clear. But grace and truth became clear in the face of Jesus Christ. And after that, he has now committed that word for us to speak. And as we speak, the word is being made clear to you. It's being made manifest. You're seeing and hearing things you never really got before. That's the manifestation of the word. That's where it actually starts from. God wants to see people who were given up on become managers and run companies. God wants to see someone who was so poor that the poor call them poor become a custodian of great wealth. Those are signs, wonders, and miracles. That's what God wants for us, church. But we must wake up to the fact that he wants his glory to be seen. And the local church is part of the design for that to happen. Hello and welcome to Fresh Stew. I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene. And it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Stew. Today on Fresh Stew, Pastor Shola Akinwale and myself will continue our wonderful message series, God is... Big in, in me. me. And this is part 29 of that message series. Amen. It's so awesome to know that God is big mm -hmm. and he's big in us. Mm -hmm. So let's have a quick review of what we've been studying so far. We've said that the word big means of considerable size or extent, larger than other items of the same kind of considerable importance or seriousness, generous. And then we're in section three of this message, section one, we started out by looking at the bigness of God, God being big. And we saw several things that showcase the bigness of our God. And then section two, we flipped over to us and we started, look, we looked at who is the me, who is the person in whom God is big, who can say God is big in me, is he every, anybody or everybody? And we found out that it's for a select few, those who are born again. And we looked at some things that will help us, you know, to cross that bridge, renew our minds, and then we can begin to experience this bigness of God. And then in, now we are in section three, and we are May, our main focus is how is this big God expressed in us? And th that's in me, combining God being big and then me, bringing it home, taking it home. And we've said that he's expressed in three interconnected ways, which we have called the 3G method, method principle. principle. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, which, and those three ways are grace, G. gifts, G. and glory. G grace, gifts, and glory. And we've looked at grace. And for the past number of episodes, we've been looking at the gifts. And we said that a gift is something which is given without compensation, a thing willing, uh, given to somebody willingly without payment. It's a present and it refers to the act of giving. We saw a twofold connection between uh, grace and gifts. We can't cover everything, so you can catch up uh, on, on, on previous parts. And then we also mentioned uh, that the word rendered grace, the gift, Greek word rendered grace, and its cognates, which are charis, char charisma, charizomai, and uh, charito, all show the fact that giving is key to grace. And then we picked up on looking at four important things about, the, a, about a gift. The first one is that a gift is offered at the discretion of the giver. Secondly, the disposition of, and the wealth of the giver come into play when a gift is given. 
And in our last episode, we looked at the giver of a gift often distributes what the receiver needs or what the receiver wants. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. So the fourth and final thing we're going to be looking at and the four important things about a gift is um, the giver is delighted when the, one he, when the ones he gives to receive what is offered to them. The giver is delighted. So look at the four Ds now. Discretion, mm. disposition, distribute, and now delighted. Mm. Four important things about a gift. Yeah. So delight simply means to take great pleasure in something. Mm. So again, looking at God as the giver, we're talking about the gifts that God gives to us that help us express the bigness of God in us. That's the context. Mm. The gifts that God gives to us that help us express the bigness of God in us. So God is the giver we're talking about here. And God takes great pleasure when he gives you gifts. He, gets, he takes great pleasure in giving to you. We found out that he gives us all things richly to enjoy. So he wants us to enjoy the gifts that we give to him, and it gives him pleasure. Mm -hmm. There are two main ways it gives him pleasure. One is when he sees the pleasure that we derive from mm -hmm. the gifts. And this is so, mm -hmm. this again gives you a sneak peek mm -hmm. into the heart of God. Yeah. He doesn't just give you to fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just give you as an obligation a father gives. Mm -hmm. He gives you, and let, let's put it this way, he's watching. Yeah. And he sees the pleasure and the thrill that he gives to you. Yeah. And when he sees that pleasure and the thrill, he gets delighted yeah. and he derives pleasure. You know, even as a human being, as a person, how do you give a gift to someone? If you're mm -hmm. really going to give a gift to someone, you put some thought to oh. it. And when you put some thoughts to it, you know, particularly if you're giving something to your wife, you better put some thoughts. <laughs> you better put some thought to it. Do you know you can give your wife something that is very expensive yeah. thought, without any thought given yeah, to it? True. And she will know over time that you're just buying things at mm -hmm. expensive shops to mm -hmm. keep her quiet and just to okay, I bought you something. But there's some kind of gifts you give to your wife that may not cost as much mm -hmm. as those expensive gifts, but she will know you thought it through. Mm -hmm. She will know you, give, you, you gave some thought mm -hmm. to it. And, you know, one of the things that you think about when you're giving thought to giving a gift is, you know, how useful is that gift going to be to that person? True. I mean, somebody has just broken their phone mm. and they have two tablets. And because it's convenient to you, for you to pick up a tablet, you pick up a tablet for the person. Mm -hmm. They will say thank you, but now they have three tablets and no phone. Mm. I can mm. tell you that the pleasure mm -hmm. would have been different good. if they had the tablet and That's you picked good. up a phone for them, maybe even better than the phone they just, mm -hmm. they just broke or just damaged. And you get that phone for them. And the person goes, oh my goodness, it's like, did you know I broke my phone? This, did you read my mail? Mm -hmm. Did you read my mind? This is so exciting. If you're a giver with mm -hmm. a heart of giving, mm -hmm. I mean, once you see that pleasure, you just start getting excited mm -hmm. as well. And you feel like you hit the sweet spot in giving that gift. Mm -hmm. That's how God is with us. He hits the sweet spot when mm -hmm. he gives us exactly what he knows mm -hmm. is useful to us and he gives him pleasure. So it's not just the presentation of a gift that matters to us, mm -hmm. but the pleasure we want the gift to bring to the receiver. Mm -hmm. And as we begin to look at the gifts, we're going to look at that, you know, God has given to us to cause us to express his bigness mm -hmm. in us. We'll see that he looked, he looked at those gifts and they had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that purpose was to bring us pleasure, mm -hmm. to bring us joy, mm -hmm. and that ultimately gives him mm -hmm. the giver delight and and, and joy as well. Amen. 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 So God is, God is amazing. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew 7, and Matthew 6 rather, and verse 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard, mm. for there are many words. Therefore, do not be like them. This is a word for a lot of us who mm. pray very religiously. O King of glory, Father of glory, King of... The way you don't God normally talk, God Shedrach, of Shedrach, Meshach, 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 those are wonderful things. Don't get us wrong. He is the king of glory. Mm. He is the God of Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But why are you putting all those plenty things? Hello, Father. Mm -hmm. This is in Kechi. Mm -hmm. You know I love you. Mm -hmm. You're just so amazing. Mm -hmm. There's no God like you. And I was thinking the other day that it would be nice if I received this. Yeah. You know, you're, you're speaking to your talking, father. Yeah. You're talking to him. You know, he says, don't use those vain repetitions because you think the more words you mm -hmm. use, I'll, I'll wake up from my slumber and I'll hear you and give you what you need. No, therefore, do not be like them. Mm -hmm. Why do you not need to be like them? For your father knows the things you have need of even before, before you, you ask, ask him. him. Yeah. So you're asking him is just the method to get to him because you have a relationship. Yep. You're not asking him because you are informing him of something he didn't already mm -hmm. know. That is good stuff. Amen. Your father already knows, even before you ask, let me even push it further, even before you realize you need it. Before you registered it. Before you registered it as a need, mm. your father already knows. Why, you know, when you say your father knows, remember we have said that God is 
willing and able. Mm -hmm. He's willing and he's able to do yeah. it. If a father is willing and able and he knows the need of a child, what then is he going to do? Is he knowing for knowing's sake? Exactly. Oh, I know you need this. I know you need mm. it. Okay, I already know you need it. Mm -hmm. If you know you need it, then drop something. <laughs> do something about <laughs> Particularly it. if you're able yeah. and you're willing. Yeah. So God is able and willing. And child of God, he knows those things you need mm -hmm. even before you come to him. So you don't need those vain words and repetitions like you are trying to coerce him. Mm -hmm. Cajole, or cajole him. Convince him. Convince him. him. No. Show him the revelation that he does not know, that you need those things. No, no. You take, if you delight yourself in him, you, he will give you the desires of your heart because he plants those desires there when you delight yourself in him. So he already knows what you need, child of God. So he's omniscient. He already knows what you need. But glory be to God, he's not just omniscient, he's mm. omnipotent mm. as well, mm. which means he has the power to solve the need even before you register it as a need. And when he solves that need, and you get the pleasure. Mm. Guess what happens? He gets the pleasure as well. He derives joy mm. when you derive joy from, from, from the gifts that he gives to you. That's mm. why he told you to ask for mm. it. You ask for it and you, delight, and you derive joy. And you know, one of the ways he sees that pleasure is when you give thanks for it. Yeah. Mm. You know, a lot of us don't give thanks. Mm. We don't give thanks. Mm. We don't say what happened to us. In passing, we give a testimony. Oh. In passing, oh, by the way, when I came to your office three years ago, Pastor, and you prayed for me, I was healed of that chronic situation. Mm. But really, why I came here today was to I'm tell you that there's another chronic situation. <laughs> you know, come on. If you give thanks to God, yeah. if you give thanks, if you, if you register what God has done mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. don't you think you like it when your child comes up to you and says, Daddy, I saw the alert on my phone from mm -hmm. the bank. Daddy, you gave me more than, my, I, than, more than mm -hmm. I asked for. He already expected you to do it if you're a good father. But when he comes back to say thank yeah. you, oh, that's okay, my son. No, dad, I want to just tell you, you're just a great dad. I don't take you for granted. Guess what happens? Before his next allowance is due, <laughs> you will visit his bank account again Amen. because you got pleasure Good. from the fact that he said thank you. Look at John 16 and verse 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Why do we not see these simple truths? Pastor Shola, whatever, hmm. you ask the Father, in, in my, my name, name, he will, will give and, it to you. And he said, in that day. In that day. Talking about the day post-resurrection. Exactly Because right. the work had has been, been done, finished and finished. settled. The price had been paid. So you don't need to, oh, glory to you, you don't need to pay anything. Pay anything. <laughs> it, the price has been paid. Amen. Just ask me. Mm. Just ask me. And mm. my, in my name. Mm. Ask the Father in my name. That's good. And he will do it for you. you God says me. yes sometimes. God says no sometimes. sometimes God so says I'm thinking about it. Where do you get all of that uh, from? Religion. As long as you ask in, in my name, mm. and as long as you have delighted yourself in him, and those desires are according to what he has planted in your heart, mm. guaranteed Amen. he will give it to you. Glory be to God. Glory but look at that. Ask and you will receive hmm. that your joy may be full. Hmm. John hmm. 15 11. Again, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy hmm. may remain in you and that That's your joy, joy may be full. <laughs> Ask. That his joy. So his joy is also joy. linked to your joy. And his joy, and your joy is linked to his, his joy. joy. And his joy is linked to you're being bold enough mm. to come to him as a father and he's excited. He, he knows I have a relationship with him and he comes and he asks me and my joy, he says, my joy, when you ask and you receive, my joy remains with you and your joy may be full. Mm. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. That means when God blesses you, when God gives to you and you are able to receive, mm. your joy is full. So if that has not happened, your joy is not full. It's good. Let your joy be full. And when your joy is full, mm. the father is delighted as well. Joy comes from the Greek word kara, mm. which means cheerfulness, mm -hmm. calm, delight. Mm. Calm, delight. Your joy will be full, child of God. Amen. Your joy will be full, child mm. of God. Amen. And don't be guilty about your joy being full. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. says, my joy remain in you and your, your joy may be full. So that's the first way mm. that we said God derives pleasure. He derives pleasure from the pleasure he sees us derive. derive from the gifts that he gives to us. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So apart from that pre pleasure mm -hmm. that we derive mm -hmm. closely on the heels of that is that God himself derives pleasure. Directly. Directly. Mm -hmm. So his pleasure is, is keyed, is connected to our pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, 
we should just cure us. Christians should cure themselves of religion. Mm -hmm. You know, so many Christians think that God is a killjoy. That, I mean, he's just, he's mean. And when you are sad, you're sober, you're sorry, then he's put you where you want. That's the place he wants you to be. You no, know, and what has contributed to this sometimes, unfortunately, are wrong depictions and experiences that people have had yes. of their own fathers. Yes. And when they now hear that God is a father, so wow, is it like my and own Dad. earthly father who was me? No, that's not God. God derives pleasure in your joy. Look at Psalm uh, 149, uh -huh. verse 4. This is lovely. Uh -huh. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. What does the Lord take pleasure in? In his people. You know, for some of us, we take pleasure in our clothes. Mm. We take pleasure in our, and it's in good. Our assets, in, in our, our assets. assets. If you have good things that even like we've seen that the Father has blessed you with, oh, for sure you should be happy. You have a lovely wife, a good husband. Those are things that God nice has car. blessed. Sorry? A nice car. Nice car. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and all those things, but what is God's highest pleasure? Mm. We see here that the Lord takes pleasure in, in his, his people. His own, his own people. Glory so I God. can say the Lord takes pleasure in Shola. Amen. The Lord takes pleasure in Kichi. Yes. Mm. You know, God is never mad at me. Mm -mm. I know that might, may ruffle some religious feathers, but God is never mad at me. Never. In fact, there is a verse, Pastor, that says that, you know, God rejoices over us with singing. Mm. He rejoice. That means when God looks at us, you know, sometimes parents have bad children, black children. I know not every child of God's conduct mm. pleases the father, mm -hmm. but because God has see, chosen to see you where he has put you in Christ, in grace, the Lord takes pleasure in you. The Lord takes pleasure in you wherever you are. Say it out loud. The Lord takes pleasure in me. He takes pleasure in you. So God is a father and the highest form of pleasure he derives, look at this, is not from the world, it's from his children. Amen. For a lack of a better term, God is a family man. I mm. hope that doesn't offend. Mm -mm. And God is not a man, but he's a, why do we have family men? Mm. Why do we have a person who's ah, he's a family man? He's or, always He's home always home. with his wife or After and his work, children. He goes straight or, home. That his vacation every day, every year is religious. He mm. must go with his wife, his two beautiful daughters. They must yeah. cross the sea. They must go, <laughs> go around the world. What, that's a family man. Yeah. And God put that in us because we are created in his image and after his likeness. So if we got that from God, then God himself is the one who is the greatest family man. Mm -hmm. And the greatest pleasure God has, listen to this, is not from the angels. Mm -mm. It's not from the birds that sing. You know, we read it, the rocks make noise or the oceans roar, they praise him. All of those things have existed for hundreds of thousands, millions Jeez. of years. Before God created man, God said, let us make man in our image. The and only way I can get the kind of pleasure, pleasure I'm looking you, out there for. There you go. Glory be to God. could only get it Glory from man. So he's like a parent looking forward to spending time with his children. Mm -hmm. So notice this. When God gives to us and we enjoy his, pre his, his provisions, he gets joy in that. Mm -hmm. Look at Psalm 35, verse 27. I love this verse. Psalm 35, <laughs> verse 27. Whenever we enjoy the provisions he's giving to us, he brings joy to his heart. Now, this is in the Old Testament. Let them shout for joy Woo! and be glad yeah. who favor my righteous cause. And let them say, not once, mm. not twice, mm. continually. Glory be to God. <laughs> let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity Perry. of his servants. He takes pleasure. And he says, shout it. Mm. In other words, when I know that God takes pleasure in my prosperity, and we'll see what that means. And I favor his righteous and cause. And I favor his righteous cause. Mm. That's a beautiful balance there. Mm. I favor his righteous cause. Then, you know, he takes pleasure in my prosperity. He said, let them shout it out. Continually. Continually. Glory be to so God. So if there is a daily glory to God, if there is a daily confession you should be making, no matter what is going around in your life, say it every day. The Lord is magnified. Ooh. He takes pleasure in, in my, my prosperity. prosperity. Now, in the Old Testament, Pastor, he says in the prosperity of his servants. Servants. Servants.
Yeah. If David could say this about himself mm. because he was a servant of God, mm. David was a servant of God. He was a sweet psalmist of Israel. He was a king. He was a prophet. He was a wonderful, a great man of God and so forth. But he was not a son of God. The mystery was still a mystery David, to him. There you go. The mystery <laughs> of grace. Yes. Christ hadn't come. No. Paul hadn't given no. us the unveiling. He couldn't say so God, he could, Christ in me, the hope of glory. He couldn't. Mm -mm. He couldn't. Let's pray this way. David would trade places with me. Ooh, till now. He'd still he want to. Ooh, he would. Yes. Moses would look from, like they say, the banisters of heaven and say, oh, wow. Should look I... at what those guys are enjoying. Yeah. And I was a servant. Look at the prosperity I walked in. But under the new covenant, glory to God, we are sons of God. So if God could be magnified when he had pleasure in the prosperity oh, of his servants, servant. then God, uh, then he takes greater pleasure glory be to God. when his sons prosper. The word pleasure there means to be pleased with, to delight in, to desire, to favor, like the other word we looked at. Now the word prosperity here is interesting. Mm. It comes from the Hebrew word shalom. More often than not in the Old Testament, it's translated as peace. Peace. And what is peace? Nothing missing, nothing broken. So God takes joy when he looks at my life, glory to God, and he sees everything is intact. When I visit my habitation, like Job says, and nothing is missing, God sees that. That's what gives him pleasure. And God is so committed to my peace that he would use his power, as I cooperate with him in faith, to crush anything. That, that will stand against it. Stand against if that. If you've got place. power and something wants to take your pleasure you from you, what do you do? You, you take that thing out of the way. What would a father do? do? I want my child to enjoy, and something is trying to harass the child, he would stand up against it. So if God could take pleasure in the peace and the well being of his servants under the Old Testament, then he must take great and immense pleasure. I like that. Great and immense pleasure in the pleasure and prosperity of his children. That's why he wants you to have a relationship with him. That's why he wants you to take time to meditate on his word, to get to know who he is. A lot of us don't know God. We don't. We see him as some distant ogre. God is father. I like to call him daddy, daddy. God. Baba. Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Whose heart is full of yearning. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew 7, 11, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Look at this. How, how much, much more, more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So an evil parent or regenerate will go contrary to nature to do good things for their children. Then how do we, do we expect less of God who is essentially, totally, and intrinsically good? who derives only the prosperity and the pleasure of his children. Glory. Blessed be God. Glory be to God. Thank big you, God Father. who is big in us. Oh, Father. Big in us who favor your righteous mm, cause. Mm. Big God who is big in Amen. us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We see your heart. Glory. The heart of a giver. Mm. We see your heart. Amen. We see your willingness. Thank we you, see Father. your ability. Thank you. We see the delight that you get you. in blessing us. Mm. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Good Father is who you are. Mm. We give you all of the praise. Mm. Thank you for deepening the relationship with your children Amen. through this series. Amen. We give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8-13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. 
come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will be surely reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 fresh you or email us at saved at fresh you.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly mp3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.